Mm. again oh <laughs> now it's easter happy easter everyone <laughs> uh, it's lovely to see so many of you gathered this morning to celebrate this wonderful occasion of easter um, at the moment we start at the back of the church and we bring the candle through the body of the church we'll just wait ah there we are the bells have stopped so um and everything else we follow through in our book but as I say, it's lovely to see so many of you gathered this morning. And if you're visiting us today for the first time or returning, you're very, very welcome. And thank you to our choir. And I must say, we said how beautiful the flowers looked when we came in this morning. So thank you to our flower arrangers as well. So we begin on page three. Christ, yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, Alpha and Omega, all time belongs to him and all ages. To him be glory and power through every age and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen, he is risen indeed. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Christ, alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. This is the day when our Lord Jesus Christ was raised gloriously from the dead, crushing the power of sin and destroying the sting of death. Throughout the world, Christians celebrate the mighty power of God as Christ calls us out of darkness to share in his marvelous light. May we and all Christ's people shine as lights in the world to the glory of God the Father. The light of Christ. Thanks be to God. We're now going to join together in singing our first hymn, Light's Glittering Morning Fill the Sky.
the light of Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. To you be glory now and forever. In your great mercy, you have given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. By your blessing, may we who have prepared this garden in celebration of his victory be strengthened in faith, know the power of his presence and rejoice in the hope of eternal glory. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed, Blessed be, be God, God forever. forever. Would you like to sit down? We're on page five. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Like Mary at the empty tomb, we fail to grasp the wonder of your presence. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Like the disciples behind locked doors, we are afraid to be seen as your followers. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Like Thomas in the upper room, we are slow to believe. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us stand to sing God's praise. Let us pray. God of glory, by the raising of your Son, you have broken the chains of death and hell. Fill your church with faith and hope, for a new day has dawned, and the way to life stands open in our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We sit for our first reading.
A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ. But each in his own order, Christ the first fruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Liz. So we now stand together to sing our second hymn. We have a gospel to proclaim, good news for men in all the earth. Paired. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. 
While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified on, on the third day, rise again. Then they remembered Jesus' words. And returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Like sit down. I wonder how many people this morning have switched on the news, whether radio or TV. Who switched on the news this morning? Oh, not many people. How many people read the news? So, how many people don't know what the news is at all? Oh, oh, whoa, whoa! <laughs> Lots of people. Oh, very good. <laughs> But I guess sometime in the day, we'll catch up with the news, as we say. Uh, and of course, the news is not just information, especially good news. Good news changes things. And Easter is good news. And it's good news that makes a difference. I wonder if there are three people, perhaps younger people, who would like to help me in my talk uh, there will be something in for them, in, no, <laughs> something in it for them at the end. Any volunteers to help me? Uh, Erica, Eric's going to lead the way. Erica, Erica can do all the volunteering and get all the reward. Or maybe some people would like to share it. Erica. Oh, well done, Marcus. And there we go, Aaron. Very good. I think if you sit on the front row, you're not going to wriggle. So I'll leave you there on the front row and I'll, I'll ask you to come forward when we get to your part. So, Easter changes everything. Erica, you were first up. Could you wave this up here? This is like a calendar. So what's the year? 30 AD. There we go. Well, thereabouts, plus or minus a bit. Easter changes bad, frat, sad Friday to good Friday. Jesus, we know, was crucified on a cross. And if it doesn't mean anything to you very much about crucifixion, I suggest you look up uh, Tom Holland's podcast this week called The Rest is History, and he spends an hour describing what crucifixion is like. And it's not a happy story. Uh, Jesus was br brutalized and then executed. Uh, he was mocked and insulted. He was naked, and all his friends abandoned him. It was bad, bad news. But Easter Sunday... Today, we say, that was then, but this is now. Jesus is risen from the dead. Jesus is raised and embraced by the Father. So death doesn't have the last word. Death isn't the conqueror, but the conquered, as Paul wrote in our first reading. I like the story of a little boy who's going past a cemetery with his dad in the car. And by the gate, they saw a huge pile of earth. It was getting ready for a burial. And the little boy looked, and he said, Dad, one of them's got out. <laughs> well, Jesus got out. So Good Friday because of Easter. Good news. Thank you, Erica. Your job is done for the moment. 
you like to sit down? Marcus is going to take over. Marcus, thank you. What date is that? Whoa, difficult to say because we're thinking about the future. Easter changes everything. Easter changes the future. I wonder if it is really the case, as the great thinkers of our time say, that people are happy to die as and when. They just roll over and don't wake up. Well, perhaps some people do, but a lot of us fight to stay alive. Paul says, Easter changes the future. Now, this is where it gets very interesting, because this morning, I have a chocolate cake provided by Leslie. She didn't know she was doing this. This is God's timing. <laughs> Some of us have given up chocolate for Lent. Does anyone want to say they gave up chocolate for Lent? I won't ask if you've had chocolate yet before lunch. No, no. <laughs> All right. Okay, what we have here is the promise. This chocolate cake was brought by Leslie for coffee and tea and refreshments in the hall afterwards. You all are going to have to wait for that. That's in the future. But my three volunteers, <laughs> they're going to have the first fruits. They can have, as long as they're not chocolate allergic and all that kind of stuff, they can help themselves. Now, I'm not sure how this cake cuts. Uh, so the, the, yes, we'll see. Oh, <laughs> there's not much in this. <laughs> uh, it's all top and, and, and nothing else. Uh, right, okay. Fine, all right. <laughs> That's not what I expected. If you can't see it. <laughs> I hope, Leslie, you didn't buy it on volume. <laughs> right, would you like a piece of chocolate? and cake and bits and bobs and Aaron okay it's not poison it's all right it's okay <laughs> Marcus Thank you. so in the future you'll get this if you want it but they have if you like the first fruits the first installment and the fact that they get it is an encouragement to you to think well I can get it if I wait if I'll get it quick enough there'll be some left for me and that's what Paul says is true about the resurrection. That those who belong to Jesus will be raised. But Je and that's in the future. That's why we've got question, question. But in AD 30 or so, Jesus was raised the first one, the first fruits. Dwight Moody was a famous preacher. Uh, he used to say, that people aren't buried, they're seeds in the ground. The resurrection. Easter changes the future. Thank you, Marcus. You've done your job. Great. Which leaves Aaron. Uh, thank you. Thank you. And the date is? Does that sound familiar? That's now. Easter is good news that changes the now, the present. We've heard about how Bad Friday became good and the future is hopeful. The present, I'm going to use a funny kind of word, is personal. Most of the news that we watch, we switch off and move on. But this kind of news is to change us in the here and now. Paul says, and this was the first line that Liz read to us, if for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. A, a way of putting that would be, being a Christian without resurrection is a life wasted. Because Paul was speaking personally. Paul had given up his learned, safe kind of environment prospect of a job for life and prestige in the community. When he became a Christian, he put all that on one side and he blazed a trail telling people about Christ. So he's speaking about personally. Later he would write, I consider everything a loss 
because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. It's true, he said. When I die, I'll be better off. To die is gain, he said. But before that, he said, for me to live is Christ. To die is gain. What difference does Easter make now? We belong to Christ. We belong to Christ. So he can be part of our life. It's a prayer that we often use that thinks of Jesus as a good shepherd, our friend and brother. That company through life, the best of friends. But also it means we're part of his team. In the first reading it talked about Jesus is still working to bring everything under God's kingdom. He talked about rulers and powers and authority. And the last enemy is death. And Jesus does what he does, but he does a lot of it through us. So what difference does it make Easter now? We belong to Christ and we are on his team. Thank you, Aaron. Take weight off your feet. We're nearly done. So I said information is one thing, but news is supposed to make a difference. We're so used to so much news coming at us, we think, well, I'll just switch it off and get on with my life. But when the Christians took out the good news of Easter, they saw lives changed. They explained how the terrible Friday became Good Friday, how there was hope in the future and the present is personal. Easter changes everything. Can we get up for our three volunteers? And I know I've whet your appetite for refreshments later. Let's say a prayer. Father, we thank you for good news, things to celebrate. But most of all, today we thank you that the world has changed, a new age has come. Jesus is alive and we can know him. Amen. Amen. To the prayers. To the prayers. Can I ask Sandra to come up and lead the intercessions? In our prayers today, when I say, risen Lord Jesus, please respond, hear our prayer. Risen Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we give thanks to you for your generosity to us in so many ways. For our families, friends and our church community here at St. James. For our homes, for clean water, for food to eat. But most of all, we thank you for your acceptance of us, your forgiveness, your unconditional love, and your presence with us when we face life's challenges. Thank you for raising Jesus from the dead so that we can receive your Holy Spirit to help us walk with you in our journey of faith. Risen Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. Father, you know what it is to suffer, to see your son die on a cross. We pray now for those in our world who are suffering for whatever reason. We lift to you people trapped in the terror of a war zone, remembering particularly the people of eastern Ukraine today. Risen Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. 
We pray for younger and older people struggling with poor mental health, particularly those known to us. Let's remember them now. We place them into your hands, O Lord, and pray that they may have good support from family, friends and professionals. And we ask your blessing on the charities working in this field that we're supporting through Lent. Renew Wellbeing, Restored UK and Headstrong. Risen Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. And we pray for those who are physically unwell, asking for your presence with them and for your healing. Members of this congregation, family and friends known to us, let's name them in our hearts to Jesus. Risen Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. And finally, Lord, we pray for those who work in health care, who are under so much pressure at the moment. Whether that's here in the UK or at Milo Hospital in Tanzania, who are supporting this Lent. We ask that you will give them physical and mental strength to fulfil the roles which you have called them to. Risen Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. The peace of the risen Christ be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one of the signs of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Our hymn now is number three. Ye choirs of New Jerusalem, your sweetest notes employ.
Be present, Lord Jesus Christ, our risen High Priest, and make yourself known in the breaking of bread. Amen. <clears throat> Shall we explain it? The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Lord of all life, you created the universe where all living things reflect your glory. You give us this great and beautiful earth to discover and to cherish. You give us Jesus, who won the great battle against sin and death. Today, when we celebrate Jesus' rising, a new way of living begins for us. You made us all each wonderfully different to join with angels and sing your praise. We thank you, loving Father, because when we turned away, you sent Jesus, your Son. He gave his life for us on the cross and shows us the way to live. Send your Holy Spirit the, that these gifts of bread and wine may be for us Christ's body and his blood. On the night before he died, when darkness had fallen, Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and shared it with his disciples, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. After they had eaten, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and shared it with his disciples, saying, This is my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. So, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate his love, his death, his risen life. As you feed us with these gifts, send your Holy Spirit and change us more and more to be like Jesus, our Saviour. Help us, Father, to love one another as we look forward to that day when suffering is ended and all creation is gathered in your loving arms. And now with James and all your saints, we give you glory through Jesus Christ in the strength of the Spirit, today and forever. Amen. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, 
as, as we, we forgive those who sin against us. us. Lead, Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. Lord, Lord our, our hearts, hearts hunger for you. For you. Give, Give us this bread and always. Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let, let us, us keep the, the feast. feast. Hallelujah. Um, if you'd like to sit for a moment. Uh, since the restrictions with COVID, we now come up one at a time to the altar. We don't line up at the rail. Um, this side comes first. Well, the choir actually will go first. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. <laughs> then this side, I think Janet will direct you. And then the people on this side come around this way. Oh, no, you can't because of the choir. They're going to have to come that way. It's all different today. So if you can sit and wait, and then Janet will direct you. As long as we have patience, we'll be fine. <laughs> and to say, if you'd like to take the wine, I'll be standing over here. But if you don't feel comfortable doing that, then just pass me by. That's quite all right. the body of Christ.
God of life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy. Grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. been very good to welcome you all to St. James's this morning. Um, if you want to stay in contact with us and you're not, uh, commu- let's start again. If you're not in regular contact with us but you'd like to, then we have an email circulation. Uh, and why not fill in the cards? They're in the pews and there's some at the back that says welcome uh, and then we can keep you informed of what's going on. There's quite a lot of information on the sheets that you've been given, particularly on the back with the things coming up. Uh, We've had a busy week in church, so I want to say thank you to everyone involved. Uh, when, um, Jackie's already begun to say thanks, but I'll say thank you again to Tom and the choir who've been here every day this week. So well done to you all. Uh, thank you to those who've arranged flowers and tidied up the place and cleaned and so on uh, as the week's gone through. And thank you to the team who were here on Friday for Messy Church and some of them made the Easter Garden. So if you haven't seen the Easter Garden, do have a look at that later. After our service, we're going to have a treasure hunt around the churchyard, and Sandra is going to be over on this side, perhaps outside, outside by number one, perhaps. Uh, And she'll have the sheets. Uh, It's quite straightforward. It's not going to take you hours and hours and hours. Don't be worried, parents or grandparents. Uh, But again, there's a reward at the end. So that's an incentive to do the treasure hunt. Uh, Next Sunday is another special Sunday in a different kind of way. It's the church's annual meeting. So after our 9.30 service, towards 11 o'clock, we'll have a general meeting here in church. Um, uh, So there won't be an 11.15 service next week. Uh, We elect people as one of the things we do in the annual meeting. And we're looking for at least one PCC member, one Deanery Synod member, and we will elect or re-elect two church wardens. There are nomination sheets out there on the side, and if you haven't had the paperwork, then do speak to Nick or me later on, and we can make sure we can send you the details. And the last thing to say, just over the horizon, we're going to begin our small groups again. We're going to use some of the brand of material we've used before, looking at uh, a kind of material literature in the Bible. This time we're looking at prophecy, and in particular, Ezekiel. So if Ezekiel is foreign ground to you in the Bible, I suspect it is for most people, um, then come along. Uh, There's a sign-up list over on the side there, and we'll work out what's the best time and places for the groups. So we're going to sing our last song now, which is number four on the sheet, which is the great Easter uh, hymn, Thine be the glory, risen, conquering Son.
God, who through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ has given us the victory, give you joy and peace in your faith and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.